Hello and welcome to another episode of Talking Ship with Jonathan Shipley. Um, we're going a different route today. Uh, instead of just interviewing comedians, I decided to branch out a bit and uh, interview some people that I know with more musical interests. So uh, with that in mind, I'm pleased to introduce my uh, first musical guest, Josh Sullivan. Yeah. What's up, guys? Now, uh, full disclosure, uh, Josh and I go uh, decently back. Uh, I met you back in the day playing Overwatch. Yeah, I think it was 2017. It's it's no, been close, a, closer to 2018. It, it's been a bit, but uh, you know, despite that, I've made uh, uh, excursions out your way to you know hang out in real life. You know, so it's, it's always a good time. But uh, let, let's start with the uh, what uh, what kind of music do you do? What uh, uh, what do you? Do? Yeah, so mostly it's just trap you know i'm really big into the edm but i'm an old hip-hop fan so if i can throw a drum beat on something that's where i go with it so it can be 80 bpm it can be 140 bpm as long as it sounds cool but you've been doing this for a while now uh almost 10 years now i think i first 10 years damn yeah i think i first illegally downloaded my first copy of fl studio back in like 2000 Seven? No. No, more than ten years of shit. You know, that's actually uh Okay, full full disclosure. You uh sent me a couple files before we did this uh interview and I was like, okay, yeah, I'll get them on and we'll do some, we'll talk some music and whatnot. Uh everyone's got music that they're plugging. Uh, I'm sure it's gonna be, you know, all right. And then I started playing and I'm like, oh holy crap, this is actually really good. Oh man, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, I'll definitely attach that at the end here so that people can get a chance to listen to it and uh, plug your SoundCloud. Uh, but let, let's get to some serious questions here. Um, Uh-oh. So I hope you're re you know, ready to uh, lay it all yeah. online. I got my beer. Do you think Carol Baskin killed her husband? Uh, shit, that's God, coming right out of the gate strong there, right? I know. Um. I'm 50-50. I think she could have done it, but after doing some science and watching some other YouTube channels, it's plausible. I think she, she definitely had something to do with it. I don't think she fed her to the tigers, but maybe now, she did. Now, when you say watching some other YouTube channels, are you talking Matt Pat? Yeah, I'm talking Matt yeah, Pat. Okay, there the we go. The science behind it, yeah. But I don't know, man. She used to have an old meat grinder, so I don't know what she did with that. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know... There's certain language and uh, whatnot that she used when you're trying not to sound suspicious, and she completely fucking She's threw clearly that making her herself suspicious. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, man. I think maybe she had a part in it. Maybe you know, she put a hit on her husband, like Joe Exotic put a hit on her. You never. <laughs> I'm just saying the the language used. In Where'd he go? Uh, Where's he at? <laughs> Well, I'm like, the language used in his will, like, you know, in my case, a disappearance. Or yeah, that. who says disappearance? Who says that? <laughs> uh, I don't know. She's not my favorite, but I'm willing to give her the benefit of the doubt, I guess, if that makes sense. But I don't know. I mean, she's got a cool catchphrase. I'll give her that, you know, all you cool cats and kittens. Uh, oh, that kind of rolls off the tongue a bit. So, you know, I give her points for that, but she definitely murdered her husband. See, that, that sounds like a mom phrase to me, like something my mom would tell me. <laughs> well, then you got a cool mom. I don't want that to be a murderer. <laughs> and your mom probably killed somebody. I hope not. So, uh, on something else here, uh, what got you into music in the first place? Uh, so, growing up, like, I had a pretty, like, you know, normal house living, middle class, grown up. But uh, one thing I do want to actually put on record here is... Uh, my family was polygamous. Really? I didn't know that. Oh, I never told you? No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, and it started right when I turned 16, which was 11 years ago. Is it a religious thing or was it uh, just uh, more into... Yeah, my mom wanted a boyfriend. My dad wanted a girlfriend kind of thing. But okay. it, it, it worked out pretty good, like... You know, there wasn't much drama or anything, but what got me into music was, you know, I just hit the peak of, like, my high school year. My parents were busy doing their own things, and I didn't have much going on, so music just, like, kind of kept me occupied all the time. And then I saw artists like Diplo, Skrillex, Porter Robinson, 
you know, Borg or coming up and they were using a program on a computer. And that's all I had was a computer. So I wanted to start mimicking that. And you're like, hey, I got one of those. Yeah, I can push some buttons and make some cool sounds. So it goes pretty far back for you. Yeah, really long time. And I keep up with it. Like, it's like one of the most consistent things in my life. So hmm. I like it. It's very therapeutic for me. You know, it's one of those things that you just kind of like threw out there one of the days we were playing where, you know, we're just, we're just enjoying a good team match and you're like, oh yeah, I also make music. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. okay, well, that's I neat. mean, <laughs> like, it's very personal for me. Like, you can have all the cliche sayings like music is everything, emo or diet, whatever you want to say. But for me, it's like a very therapeutic thing. And that's why, like, I want to share it more. It's because, like, I'm not the best at it, but it means a lot to me. You don't have to be the best at anything. Like, I, I fucking suck at what I do. But you know what? As long as you enjoy doing it. Exactly. That's it, all it, that matters. And you get better and better as you do it. And I love it, it. Exactly. And as long as you continue to enjoy it, then, you know, hats off to you. Awesome. Man, there are songs that I made 10 years ago that I look at, like, why the fuck did I make this? But there's also songs that I made 10 years ago that still like hit me to this day when I have like a bad day or something. I'm just throw that on and I'm like, yeah, feels good. Okay. Uh, well, another hard hitting one here. Uh, uh -oh. Best animated show and why is it Gravity Falls? Uh, it's not Gravity Falls. It's called Naruto. And yes, I will okay. Be well, here's how we're gonna go ahead and this here. <laughs> No, but you're so you're really big into Naruto and whatnot. I remember uh, seeing a bunch of Naruto swag when I uh, went up to visit you guys. So uh, yeah, I that, got the tattoo, man. man. Oh, you got the tattoo. I don't know if I can show it here. It wouldn't be appropriate. <laughs> okay. Well, well I mean, it's only on my chest, but it's showing skin. <laughs> you think that really is going to stop us? But okay. Well, it, for the audio aspect here, for the people that are listening into the podcast, what is it of? It is Kurama, of course, Nine Fox. Okay. The monster that starts with Naruto and then becomes his best friend. They're besties. Yeah, they are besties. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's on my, what is this, my right side? Yeah, right pectoral. And it's the bust that I've had for, I got it when I was 19, so seven years ago. Yeah. yeah. That's commitment, man. It is. It needs to be touched up, though. <laughs> oh, God, I got so many that need to be touched up. <laughs> and guess what? All the tattoo parlors are closed right now. <laughs> That's why you got to go DIY and do it yourself, man. Just get, uh, just get yeah. some just tap it in there. No, no. No. <laughs> well, uh, you first. You first. <laughs> dude, the one that I needed to get touched up is on my back, and I don't want to get like a series of mirrors and like, you know, finagle it. Like I said, you do it first. Come on. Get a series of mirrors and touch yourself up first. And Dude, yours, you is right, yours is right here. So you yeah, don't but I still really... got to look down. Uh, First world problems. Whatever. <laughs> so uh, that kind of leads into my next question here. How has this quarantine affected you and yours? It's been It's been pretty good. I mean, it's rough. I want things to go back to normal, but I've also been lucky enough to be able to have like a stable full-time job pto when i need it but so last real time, drag last time i got to see you you were working as like a, a vet tech yeah so, kennel technician slash vet tech i do kind of both i will say you were one of my favorite people to have in my facebook feed because it ensures that i have a uh steady stream of random doggos yes dude thank you yeah dude that's my job in the world I'll just send you pictures of happy dogs all day. Dude, that is all I ask. <laughs> Plus, you've met Missy. You know she's the coolest border collie around. Dude, okay, so when you first came up in conversation between me and my fiance, I had to send you a message asking you to send me a video of Missy's reaction to oh, yeah. uh, certain trigger words. And <laughs> my favorite trigger word of hers is Donald Trump, where she just loses her utter shit. Tell the people of your podcast what <laughs> trigger words my dog knows. Oh, man, she's the best. Dude, I remember when I was over there and I got to see her. You're just like, oh, hey, Missy, what do you think of Donald Trump? And she just grabs her toys and she's like, just oh, like yeah, dude. thrashing it. She, I've taught her Donald Trump. I've taught her Justin Bieber. I've taught her Tom Cruise now. 
So she's on a good roll. And the cool thing is whenever I say Obama, she doesn't get mad. And I'm like, thank you. So it's not like a, it's, <laughs> it's the word itself. It's not like the manner it's said. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, it kind of is like because the best way to train dogs is tone training. But I mean, if I if I tell her anything in that tone, she'll freak out. But I limit it to specific words that I don't like, so she doesn't like them. So it's like a fifty fifty treat. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's that's a good party trick, man. If I were a straight man, I'd have all the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Let, let's let's get into that. Um, you mentioned not being a straight man. I uh, I got the pleasure of officiating your wedding this uh, this past yeah. year. We drove like fucking two or three hours up to the top of a mountain, lost each other for a bit because Jay Dude. and Willie were with us. And then we got to a peak and you were like, you want to do it now? And I was like, I guess we do. <laughs> I, I will say that, uh, like you mentioned, we had to drive up to the peak of, a, of like a mountain uh, in Colorado. And you guys don't fucking play up there. Like there is no shoulders to any road. That's what scared the fuck out of me, dude. We could have gone off a cliff at any time. I think we had a conversation at one point in the car. Me and you looked at each other and we were like, we could die any time now. (laughs) This is how we're going to (laughs) die. No, and I I love your husband and whatnot, but holy shit, he's just fucking, uh, he's lighting up while we're driving up there. I'm like, like, are you really going to smoke when there's like a 50,000 foot plummet right there? (laughs) I give him shit about that to this day still. Do you remember all those fucking old fucking white people who were driving their fucking like corvettes right next to us yeah yeah going up the fucking mountain i'm like if well if they're not dead i guess we're okay <laughs> dude they're just no i mean it's not that they're not dead it's that they're planning for like a thelma and louise moment where they just go exactly. over in their corvette <laughs> yes they're all just exactly gonna, like, what they're gonna like grasp each other's hands and just like plummet to the massive oh, explosion man. but it was beautiful up there and then we had that uh, couple that uh, when you officiated us, they were standing on the side and I thought they were going to be judgmental, but they actually clapped for us and they're like, yay. It's like that little old lady. And, like, yeah. mm-hmm. so and I was like, oh, thanks for not being judgmental. <laughs> you just witnessed a gay marriage. I'll, pu- I'll put the video up there or the picture up there. As the, that's the one you wanted me to use for your uh, mm-hmm. your photo anyway. But uh, you get to see uh, uh, Josh and his uh, husband and, and me freezing my tits off in the back. <laughs> yeah. All you had on was like an Overwatch hoodie, and then we were like all dressed up to get married, and we're like, "Fuck, it's cold up here." I mean, whatever, man. It's it's something memorable. <laughs> I guess that's what happens when you go, you know, miles above the sea limit. Something like that. You guys are all used to it, but uh, I was drinking and smoking with you all weekend, or well, all the time I was there, and man, I got fucking just like plastered and high really easily because I'm not used to it. And now I have these roads with no edges on them as we go up a peak. <laughs> I was super paranoid. Like I'm like, oh man, uh, I was going over my little speech for you guys uh, officiating. Meanwhile, I'm like drunk and slightly uh, crossfaded <laughs> and I'm just like, this is how I'm going to fucking die. <laughs> That's what makes me happy is our marriage certificate, which is a legal document, is signed by all of us just having a fucked up weekend, but it was the best weekend of my life. It's the only time I've used the phrase Reverend Jonathan Shipley. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I have it in writing. <laughs> uh, so uh, back onto some hard questions, though. All right. Um, and this one, it's a hard one, so think it through here. Uh, but Disney villains, uh, best and worst lover. Best and worst lover. Among the Disney villains... It's a modified version of Fuck, Mary Kill. Best and worst lover, the Disney villains. Ooh, best lover, probably Beast from Beauty and the Beast. He's not a villain. Oh, that's right, villain. Um, villain. Gaston? I do like Gaston. That's, that's, the, you, you know, I, that's when I posed this question to Susan earlier, that's what I picked for best. Gaston is best. Worst? Uh, probably the fucking douchebag king from Frozen. He was a lover, technically, and he was a dick. I... I've only seen it once, but he was an asshole. That's 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 fair. Uh, honestly, I also don't know many Disney villains <laughs> off the top of my head. 
<laughs> Ouch. That, that I hurts. know. That hurts I know. Right in the feels. You want hard <laughs> questions, you're going to get hard answers, man. Hey, uh, like you know, I, I play both sides of the field, so if I had to go with best, I agree with you with Gaston. If I had to go with someone of the female persuasion, I'd go with Maleficent. Because I have a I'm soft pre- spot. I'm pretty sure she's into some weird shit. Oh yeah, you know she is, dude. She can fucking turn into a dragon. <laughs> you know what? And she she could do that in the middle, and I would not lose a beat. <laughs> God damn it! I don't know. Ever I do like the new. Okay, I do have one guilty pleasure. It is the uh, remake that they've done. I've liked both of them so far. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? You kind of cut out there. Oh, sorry. I do like the uh, Maleficent remakes of oh, the Angelina the... Jolie. Uh, she makes a damn good Maleficent. She does, man. She does. Guilty pleasure. Would not have normally picked her, but it's one of those things where, kind of like The Dark Knight, how people were shitting on uh, uh, Heath Ledger, uh, the pick for him. You just don't see it until it's in front of you. And then it's mm. like, oh, wow, this is exactly what they envisioned. Yeah. Well, I mean, that was like, he got an Oscar. Was it an Oscar or a Grammy? Yeah, he got a posthumous. Post, uh, post, yeah. So uh, you do music. Uh, that's one of your big passions. Uh, do you have any other art forms that you're interested in that you uh, explore? Uh, not really, unless you count video games. I do think I'm a competent gamer, but I can't fucking draw a stick figure to save my life. I, I mean, I think competent is a little uh, nice there. Oh, shut up, John. I mean, if you could throw some healing my way when we're playing, that'd be great. No, DPS Moira is the best, and it will. I'm never going to not stop saying that. Oh, my God. Um, so for I'm you... A, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm a really good Fallout player. If anyone ever wants to throw down at that, bring it. I mean, you say Fallout player. We're talking four, three, New Vegas. We're not talking seventy six. Any, yeah, anything but seventy six, of course. Because we like to play games. Yeah, not broken pieces of shit. You spend sixty dollars on. Dude, I remember when that came out, and you, me, and your husband got together playing online, and we're just like, "This is not fun." Having this the is- fucking ghouls t posing on us all over the place. This is, this is just a bunch of fetch quests to, for computers. No. But only video games, I guess. I mean, I can... I haven't drawn anything, really, in years. I can paint, but it's mostly music. Like, that's where my passion is. Like, when I sit down at a laptop, open it up, open up my, you know, synthesizers and drum kits, and, like, get into it, have some moments sometime. So you mentioned a few of uh, your... Um, influences on what got you into music uh Mm -hmm. when you're creating music what kind of uh what what music do you listen to what are your personal influences uh that kind of play into the sound that you make uh i would have to say that's a big question uh take your time pop ones to mine easy e big e snoop dog i'm really into like the late 80s early 90s hip-hop like like, I'll listen to a track by them, and I'll just try to make a beat that's not copying them, but just something that, like, would flow with it, if that makes sense. Dude, I, I totally get what you're saying. Little, uh, little middle school white boy Jonathan was all about Run DMC. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we're both skinny white boys. When you fucking run around playing Easy e and fucking hip-hop, kids are like, oh, fuck, dude. You're a skinny little white dude, but those are, like, the... I, I love those so much. Uh, I like artists like Lil Dicky. Um, Rihanna's still one of my favorites, but you know she's mainstream, which is nothing wrong. But I yeah, I, anything I, that has a good beat to it, I can work with. That's where I start. Do you? Uh, you said there's nothing wrong with going mainstream. Uh, do you have any artists that you personally were really big into, but once they kind of went mainstream, you kind of lost a little interest with? Hmm think about that one hey and i ask this question with any kind of lens of pretension and whatnot taken off here because i i get it we all kind of do it occasionally good question i wasn't prepared for um no i mean i mean i know that you love fallout boy uh you share that a lot 
in our like yeah. face in our messenger group and whatnot. I'm, I'm like so my favorite band of all time. I'm putting this on record for now. Excuse me, is um, Panic at the Disco. Okay. And I'm I'm more mad at their lower mainstream success because there's a lot of songs in that era that people don't know. I, all they know is I write sins. There was like two albums worth of good content there, and now they've blown up. And I'm just like everyone knows their music. So I guess kind of opposite. I I, I I agree with you on that one. I I'm in that I'm in that camp. I'm guilty. Uh, mm-hmm. I loved their first album. Dude, Build and, God, Then We'll Talk is like one of the greatest songs ever, but no one fucking knows it. That first they know album all is, the new shit. That first album is pretty much where I left them until recently, and they blew up. I remember yeah. how back in the day there was a little bit of controversy of how they, they removed the exclamation point in their name, and then they put yeah, it back. Yeah, they put it back, and now Brennan's the only one left off. Oh. Actually, no, I do have an answer for your question now that I've been thinking. Okay. Avenged Sevenfold. They are not the same band they used to be. Uh, when they had the Rev back with them, when they were coming up back in, what was it, 2005? Like, they were my shit. And then ever since then, they can't figure out a drummer. And then you don't even hear from them anymore, really. At least that I know of. Nightmare was a great album. Their one... Uh, when they had the lineup with Aaron LeJay, he was a good drummer, but then they got rid of him, and I don't even know who the fuck's drumming for him anymore. I don't hear about him. I, I I can see that. Yeah, I know that they've had kind of had hard times, especially after Rev died. Yeah, rest um, in peace, the Rev. Reverend Jonathan Shipley. I did uh, not die. This is not I, this is not a, ta- a conversation <laughs> from the grave. The Reverend Tholomew Plague. Yeah, I actually got my Libre piercing when I was nineteen because. I was so infatuated with the Rev, like his drumming style and everything about him. I just wanted to be that person. And he got me through a lot of shit today. So I was like, this is for you. I think there, I mean, yeah, this is not like a, this is not a controversial take, but there's, there's that aspect of music that everyone, you, you're never going to find somebody that doesn't enjoy music or hasn't associated some songs or whatnot with different parts of their life and help them get through a hard time. Um, <laughs> one, of, one of the jokes that I did in one of my earlier sets was uh, about how I was at a strip club and um, I had a stripper who was grinding on me and whatnot. And she was like, so do you like music? And I'm like, yes, I am the one person on earth that does not yeah. know like rhythmic sounds <laughs> like who the fuck says no to that we connected we have something in common no dude i i got at my uh, bachelor party that's when it happened and as she was like grinding on me and whatnot i realized that she's got fucking uh tech nine tattooed across her chest oh I'm no like, i'm like oh and that's uh, really, you lost me god regretful decisions right there well, it's it's one of those things where my best man at the time, or well, I'm sorry, not my best man. One of my uh, groomsmen had been like, "Hey, John, uh, she wants to take you back there," and I I would lit up because I'm like, "Oh, hey, you know, colored hair, tattoos. That's exactly my type. Awesome, cool." And then she starts talking about Tech Nine, and I'm like, "This is the biggest oh, boner killer of all time." <laughs> just blew it. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Uh. But yeah, dude, I I think music is one of those kind of universal things that we all, everybody enjoys. And you always, oh, I thought of a good one here. It's not actually something I read down here, but uh, something that I think is interesting. Okay. Um, You know how like when you're, how we tie music and movies and shows and whatnot to different parts of our life? Mm-hmm. Like when you think of high school, like, you know, when you think of high school, Josh, and you think back to the songs you used to like. You almost called me loco. <laughs> I did. I did. I, I, let me just put that out there. I refer to Josh as loco because that's the gamer tag he's used forever. So I've always referred to you as loco and it's so weird. Here's for me to, that. Here's the me referring to you as Josh. But uh, so when you're, when you're thinking about like different parts of your life, uh, is there any music 
or like what are shows, et cetera, along the way that have been like tied to somebody like an ex that you just can't listen to anymore or uh, embrace anymore because of that? Yeah. Um, if you, well, here's a concept. If you can consider high school as an ex. Yeah. Um, sure. I tie the devil wears part of that, man. That was all I did in high school was listen to the fucking death metal every day. And now when I listen to it, all I can think about is high school. And it's just one of those things where do you do you still enjoy it, or is it one of those things where it's kind of because it's tied to that memory, it's in the past for you now? I always I always try to keep it positive. I think it's nostalgic, and I always try to just like whenever I hear like anytime I listen to death metal now, like every I just think about high school, but I always remember the good points of high school, and it it's like cathartic and nostalgic for me. It's it's kind of blended for me. Like when I think of like Green Day and MCR, that's yeah. like tied to like positive memories of high school. Mm-hmm. But certain like bands like um Smashing Pumpkins. Oh, I had, dude, don't shit on Billy Corgan. I love him. I am not shitting on Billy Corgan. <laughs> I love the Smashing Pumpkins, but it's one of those things where I had an ex who was just obsessed with them. Oh no! And I cannot listen to them in the same way. Dude, it's, that sucks. It's the same. It's the Fuck same. That th- person. <laughs> it's the same thing with Coheed. My ex was uh, she was super into Coheed, and I will never look at them and not make that uh connection anymore. I oh, mean, that sucks when that happens, though. Like Good life, man. Like we all, everyone makes connections to what affected them at specific times, and a lot of times that gets tied to people. That's how our brains work. Like, we tie those things to people. It's crazy. Well, let me, let me bring this to a lighter note. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, off of depressing music. <laughs> so, free for all between the members of the Golden Girls, who wins? I don't even know the Golden Girls off the top of my head. Oh, dude. Ouch. I know, man. Beyonce is my queen. Rihanna's my princess. Okay, they're not members of the Golden Girls. So I know they do not. not count. I was just thinking of my Golden Girls. I, you know what? And I was going to even throw you a softball there because, frankly, I would have accepted B. Arthur or, you know, Betty White, but no. Uh, okay, right. okay. Yeah, that's right. Betty White was in the Golden Girls. I know that now. Yes, she me. was. All right, well, she gets number one for me. Oh. <laughs> Are you sure you're gay? Uh, yeah. I'm not that gay, but I'm just gay. Uh, see, I'm giving you shit. Okay, well, let, let me uh, throw this. Let me let me ask you this one, then. Okay, best Power Ranger? Favorite Power Ranger? Red Power Ranger. Red Power Ranger. Well, blue is tie, but it depends on if it's the Mighty Morphin or the later one. I liked, I liked the whole concept as a kid, that he was a kid, but when he transformed, like... He was, you know, a normal Power Ranger. I thought that was really cool. Like, not in, like, a weird way, but I just thought it was cool that fucking morphed into an adult. And I was like, oh, shit. Uh, if we're going Mighty Morphin, I would definitely... Uh, I like Tommy the Green Ranger, mainly because I love, as cliche as it is, I love any kind of story where somebody grows as a person, and Tommy goes from being a pawn to being his own person. Yeah, wasn't he the, was he, who was the White Ranger? He was the White Ranger. He was yeah. reborn as the White Ranger. And then he was also a porn star on the side. <laughs> he was not. He was what, an MMA. Was that, just, was that just rumor? That was rumor, but he was an MMA fighter for briefly. Oh, I didn't know and that actually. he actually is tied to like two or three other Power Rangers projects. He's like one of the few people that like kind of stuck with it and oh, makes I... their uh, their living doing circuits for... You know, the Power Ranger stuff at conventions. I, I didn't know that. Holy shit. Yeah. I just thought he got stuck with the porn star thing. <laughs> I don't, you know what? I, I can't say with 100% certainty, but I don't think he was a porn star. I'm pretty sure. All right. Must have just been rumors. Uh, well, so we've talked a little bit about your music. Um, What kind of uh, instruments, what kind of programs do you like to incorporate? Uh, Instruments? So I just, I mean, I'm a noob. I usually, I have always used uh, FL Studio 7 is my favorite. 
Um, nowadays, people are using 10 and Ableton and all that kind of stuff. But 7 is just, it has that homey feeling for me that I'm familiar with. Um, and then it's just, you know, looking for who's releasing the newest 808 kits that sound fucking banger, who's releasing the synthesizers that are sound banger. That's pretty much what I go off. Like, I just go with the flow, but I try to find something that I think sounds good that other people like. Here. Well, I've had a lot of experience with a lot of different uh, music making programs. Mm -hmm. My my experience with them mainly has been like Audacity and like uh, tracking. Oh yeah, Audacity. <laughs> yeah. Audacity is what I use for throwing up, uh, for editing and whatnot. That's, for the most that's part. still the best way to fucking edit and chop shit out of there. <laughs> to this day, I've, I've used actually Audacity in the last year. So. Really? Yep. I have to cut something up. Want a good sound program? There you go. I, uh, I will say one perk of doing this whole thing on Zoom is that uh, Zoom will after we end our meetings, will throw me a video file. It'll throw me an audio file. And as long as you have the right plugin for it, it will uh, automatically, uh, like, it gives you like an M4A file or something like M MA4 or whatever. Yeah, and, I've seen those. And it doesn't work with a lot of programs, but if you get the right plugin for Audacity, you can just take that file and throw it straight into Audacity for any kind of editing without doing any kind of like conversion. So room, it, room. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> so um, I think we'll go ahead and kind of wrap it on that. But um, two things. Uh, okay. First off, I'm going to put one musical track, uh, hopefully linked to this. Uh, okay. Try to. Uh, if I could pick one of your tracks, what is your favorite that you might want to share with people? Use the Bells. I think that um, it's one of the hardest tracks I've worked on. And I feel like not enough, like I share it, but... It needs to be listed. It's a good sound. Okay, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and try to attach that to this. Um, uh, besides that, where can people find you? Where can people find your music, uh, your social media presence? Uh, what are some good links? Uh, shout out uh, for myself. Uh, SoundCloud.com slash LocoShepherd is where you'll find whenever I'm working on a project, it'll be there. And then uh, if you want me on Facebook, just search Josh Sullivan. I'm in Denver. You find me, you find me. If you don't, you don't. So I'll I'll try to I'll try to throw your uh, Facebook profile up there if you want me to. You might I'll get a couple. It. You might get a couple creepers. I don't know. I always message first for I add, so I'll I'll determine. But I mean, I'm just really trying to uh, promote good vibes. You know, we're all stuck in this situation, but I want to make the most of it. So. And that, that's fair. I mean, I think that's the big thing right now is that we're all kind of isolated and it's small things like this that kind of still keep us all connected. This because has been I, like a highlight of my day. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. I know that a lot of us are really kind of, this isolation is getting to everybody. Yeah. Also plug, stay safe, people. Yeah, don't go out there. You don't, you don't need to. If you don't have an essential job, don't leave. I have an essential job and I don't even want to go out there. <laughs> Dude, me too. I, I hate it. Like, seriously, my work, we've had like three confirmed cases. Oh, but they man. Keep, they keep us coming. Wash your hands, cover your face, don't touch your face, and don't go around people you don't need to. <laughs> Stay out of melee distance. Yeah, exactly. If you have to fight someone at the supermarket, you shouldn't be at the supermarket. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap on that. Um, again, big thanks to uh, Josh Sheldon for uh, joining us today. First musical guest. Oh, thank you. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, I'd like to have you back on some time. You know? Yeah, I would love to. Johnny Boy, you're one of my bestest friends, so anytime. Hey, that's why when I thought of adding musical guests, you know, you came to mind. So. All right, man. All right, well, thank you again, and... This has been Talking Ship with Jonathan Shipley. Talking Ship? <laughs>